Hey, this is Matt, and we're off our couch at Fort Clinch State Park in Fernandina Beach, Florida, on Amelia Island. We're back in Northeast Florida, about an hour north of Jacksonville. This is our first time visiting Fort Clinch State Park. Surprising, since we live in Jacksonville. Uh, but we're here now and looking forward to finally checking out this beautiful, lush, and massive state park, as well as the historic fort. Admission to the park is $6, and our journey into the park leads us down the historic Canopy Road. The road is draped with oak trees and Spanish moss. This is a beautiful drive. It's even more beautiful in person. It reminds me of the drive we recently enjoyed when we were off our couch in Ormond Beach, Florida on the Ormond Scenic Loop. Now this road will lead us to the Fort Clinch Visitor Center where you can pay an additional entrance fee to enter Fort Clinch. Many park guests visit Fort Clinch State Park just for the state park because there are so many activities to enjoy besides exploring the fort, like the beach, hiking and biking trails, bird Bird watching um, Fort Clinch State Park is part of the Great Florida Birding Trail. There's also camping. There are actually a total of 69 campsites available. There's also the primitive group camp facility. Um, there's fishing, wildlife viewing, and even more activities. We're definitely going to be making it down this long scenic road to the fort, but we'll also be stopping to enjoy some of the amenities that this beautiful 1400 acre park offers along the way. Be sure to subscribe also because we'll be exploring more state parks this year as well as future videos. Our first stop here at Fort Clinch State Park is Egan's Creek Overlook. This is an excellent place to bird watch. Fort Clinch State Park is one of the first stops on the Great Florida Birdie and Wildlife Trail. There is the opportunity to see over 100 species of birds that live here at the park or stop here during their migration routes. We really love the vastness of this overlook and from the overlook, in addition to birds and wildlife, you can also view the Amelia Island Lighthouse through the binoculars at no charge. The Amelia Island Lighthouse is Florida's oldest lighthouse built in 1838, before Florida was even a state. This is an excellent spot to view the lighthouse, especially since it's only open to the public Saturdays from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And tours to enter the lighthouse occur just on the first and third Wednesdays of the month. If you're not here on the right day during the right times, uh, this is a great way to view the lighthouse still. Speaking of the lighthouse, this informational sign outside the Overlook explains there were as many as four other beacons on Amelia Island, and two were on the property that is now Fort Clinch. The remains of the Willow Pond Beacon is still here in Fort Clinch State Park. This is the Willow Pond Oil House. The remains of this oil house is proof that a beacon was nearby. This oil house was built in 1891 and could store 450 gallons of kerosene, which was a one-year supply. Um, you can see the rain is coming down now. It's coming, then stopping, and then just repeating that pattern. So we're pressing on in between the rain showers. Uh, we're now in front of the Willow Pond Nature Trail. There are two loops available and a guided nature trail is offered here every Saturday morning at 1030, weather permitting. In addition to the lush and interesting scenery that we're viewing, uh, there are warning signs. Alligators may be present along the trails and waterways. I have my own warnings too. Uh, be sure to watch your step. All of you professional hikers know the deal, but this steep drop almost took me out, so I'm mentioning it. There are many, many trails at this park. I've seen the signs for shared use trail for um, those hiking or mountain biking several times while on this beautiful drive. Here's another warning sign, caution wildlife crossing. Uh, since go for tortoises are known to roam this area. And look who we just happened to run across, a gopher tortoise. We learned when we visited Anastasia State Park in St. Augustine, Florida, that gopher tortoises are keystone species because they build burrows for other animals. And this tortoise is on its way to a burrow right now. And it looks pretty snug in there. Uh, but the tortoise made it in, they're gone. But we're gonna keep our eyes open as we continue to drive because this state park is also home to alligators, as I previously mentioned raccoons, bobcats, deer, and many different birds since this is on the Great Florida Birding Trail. 
From the shoreline, we may possibly see dolphins and right whales. And once we get to the fort, sometimes you can see the wild horses on Cumberland Island across the water. So we're gonna stay on the lookout throughout the day for wildlife. Since we're exploring this state park for the first time, as well as trying to stay in the car during the heavy rain showers, we've just been driving around and we came across this sign that says Beach Access Bird Exhibit and Bike Watch. So we're gonna check that out. Uh, this is one of the beach access points. Um, we're gonna check the beach out in a bit. And here's the bike area. There are tools to maintain your bike, a tire pump, as well as the bike wash. Since there are plenty of trails for mountain biking, uh, here's a place to clean your bike afterwards. And there's also a refillable water station here too. Now onto the bird exhibit. So we already talked about how Fort Clinch is one of the first sites on the Great Florida Birdie and Wildlife Trail. And what's cool is that you can borrow binoculars from the visitor center and get some tips there also to improve your wildlife viewing experience but you don't need any binoculars to view the birds here. Since the feeding stations are right here, this is a great place to get your bird viewing off to a great start, I think. There are bird feeding stations on the opposite side of the bird exhibit area also, and there are picnic tables there as well. So now we're gonna make our way to the visitor center. Uh, this is where you pay to enter the fort, purchase snacks and souvenirs, and the restrooms are located here as well. Outside the visitor center, there's information and history about the fort, which we'll check out before entering the center. The restoration of this fort was made possible by the Civilian Conservation Corps. Between 1937 and 1942, the employees of CCC, the Civilian Conservation Corps, removed 10,000 cubic yards of sand and debris from the fort, as well as constructing the museum, campground, and park roads. This statue is in honor of those men. In front of the visitor center, the schedule of events is posted. The nature walk I mentioned earlier is listed here, along with kids' fishing clinics and quite a few other events that are offered throughout the year at the park. There's also a playground and historic herb garden, which we didn't get to visit. It's adjacent to the visitor center and has medicinal herbs and plants used during the Civil War. There's just so much to do here in the state park without even visiting the fort. As I stated before, this park is 1,400 acres, so there's so much to cover. As you can see, we are in the visitor center now. Here you can purchase trinkets, souvenirs, snacks, books pertaining to the Civil War, and other items. The visitor center also sells firewood, ice, and bait, and this is where we'll purchase our admission to the fort. To visit the museum is free. We do have to walk through the museum in order to enter the fort. The cost to enter the fort is $2.50 per person. I didn't have to pay for my daughter since she's five. Children under six are free. So we paid an additional $7.50 on top of the $6 entrance fee that we already paid for the park. We're inside of the museum, as you can see. Again, there is no charge to just view the museum. Within the museum, you'll learn more about the fort and its role in American and Florida history. There is a 10 minute video explaining the history of the fort. The video also provides views of the rooms for visitors with accessibility concerns. We're learning that Fort Clinch is a third system fort. The third system fortifications included a series of forts built along the coastline of the United States to defend against foreign invaders. Fort Clinch is one of many masonry forts built between 1816 and 1867. The third system fortifications were improvements on the first two systems of fortifications that were put together hastily due to the threat of war. This museum also displays artifacts associated with Fort Clinch along with armaments and projectiles from the Civil War time period and additional displays associated with Fort Clinch during later time periods. If you take your time to really look, read all of the informational signs, and view the mini displays, you can spend a lot of time in this museum. And there's also an app where General Clinch, who served as a commander during the War of 1812, 
and the First and Second Seminole Wars, the general that the fort was named after, provides insights of life in Florida during the 1800s. Well, it's time for us to venture to the fort, and it's raining again, but uh, we're excited anyways to finally experience this. We've been reading all about it, so it's finally time to see it. So we're imagining it's 1864 and the Civil War is taking place. Union soldiers are building the fort and guests like us are encouraged to ask the soldiers questions about their daily lives here at Fort Clinch. A few interesting facts about this fort as we make our way there and hopefully not get struck by lightning. <laughs> the storms have been really bad. Uh, right now the rain is light, so that's good. Anyway, some interesting information about this fort. It was never completed. Uh, no battles were fought here. This fort was not considered a priority. They divided the proposed fortifications into categories due to a limited amount of time and money, and Fort Clinch was placed in the category considered least urgent. This area was chosen as a location to build a fort because of the St. Mary's River uh, to protect Fernandina from being invaded by a foreign power, and it also protected the east link of Florida's only cross-state railroad. After the Civil War, the fort was later used as a barracks and ammunition depot during the Spanish-American War and was also used as a joint operations center for surveillance and communications during World War II. This fort is huge, I tell you. I think it's the biggest fort that we've been to. Way bigger than Fort Mantanzas and Castillo de San Marcos National Monument in St. Augustine. And we've been to both of the forts in San Juan, Puerto Rico too. We have plans to visit Fort Pickens later this year in Pensacola, so I'm looking forward to comparing this fort to that one. And the kids are having a blast running from room to room in an attempt to escape the rain. There are many, many rooms in this fort. There are guard rooms, a prison. Uh, my son was actually listening intently to the introductory video in the visitor center and is telling us about the different confinements. Uh, interesting and disturbing information. On a lighter note, my son also learned from the video that they would sew rugs to put on the floors to protect their feet from the cold floors. There are also enlisted men's barracks, a bakery, blacksmith shop, storehouses, hospital, kitchens. I've seen this no spitting in kitchen sign at least twice. Uh, I wonder if that's an 1800 issue or something that's going on now. <laughs> I don't know. I'm curious. The rain has stopped as well as the lightning for now. So we're going to go ahead and head up to enjoy the views. We can take the ramp or the stairs. Uh, and this is going to take us to the gun deck and provide us with views of the Cumberland Sound. Cumberland Island. That's Georgia there where you can sometimes see wild horses and I meant to ask for binoculars at the visitor center and totally forgot. I wanted a better chance to see the horses. So just a reminder, don't forget your binoculars. From the gun deck, you can also see the St. Mary's River, the Atlantic Ocean, and Fort Clinch State Park. Although this is the calm after the storm, I mean, you can definitely tell it's been raining. I still think the view is magnificent. Uh, I can stay up here enjoying this view for a while. We still have much more to explore, so we're going to go ahead and go down these beautiful spiral stairs one at a time. Uh, there are so many dark places within the fort and so many nooks and crannies. There are several different paths to follow at this fort and so many different ways to go that London is seeing corridors and rooms that I didn't get the chance to see. I'm trying to catch up with London and the kids now. I thought I could get out here, but I can't. There are just so many rooms and corridors. It's easy to get lost. London? 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 And that's me lost, <laughs> just making my point. <laughs> I was the last one down the stairs and then I went a different direction uh, once I got down the stairs. Uh, I started following voices. There was a male voice and kids chattering, but that wasn't my family. Uh, I did eventually find London and the kids. They're checking out the toilet. Uh, besides the toilet, this fort is a photographer's dream. And if you have mad skills, you can probably pull out some epic shots of the toilet too. Not me, I'm taking pictures of the scenic pretty stuff that I'm sharing on Instagram. So check us out there please. 
Oh, and we did get a chance to ask the soldier a question. How do we get to the beach from here? I would have loved to ask questions and learn more about the actual fort in the history. Unfortunately, the fort is closing. Um, we didn't have as much time here as we would have liked going back and forth with the rain and storms, but we're going to end the day on the beach, so it's all good. On our way there, we're coming across a rabbit. I just love rabbits. Now we'll continue on to the beach for more of those wonderful views, plus some seriously great shelling. We're coming across a unique and beautiful shell uh, pretty much every minute, and I'm not exaggerating. My daughter just found the tiniest shell ever. Uh, I don't know if that's true, obviously. It is really tiny though and pretty. The shells here are numerous, so the ground feels shelly. Uh, so I would recommend wearing your shoes or at least water shoes while you're on the beach. In addition to shelling, this is a great place to go shark tooth hunting. And if you don't come across a shark tooth, uh, just purchase one from the visitor center, drop it on the ground, and voila, shark tooth found. <laughs> you are very welcome. Just one of my many travel and parenting hacks. <laughs> all kidding aside, my kids are beyond content, excited really to be picking up all these shells. So our day of hunting has been really easy. The day started off rocky due to the weather, yet it's been a wonderful day. We all learned so much. The kids love Love that they can see Georgia, another state, just across the way. I asked everyone what their favorite part of the day was. Uh, my daughter loved going to the top, uh, walking to the gun deck. She was so happy when the weather cleared so we could check out the views. My son loved the empty, abandoned aura of the fort. He says it feels like a haunted house. And he did pull off a jump scare too. Yeah, he got me in one of those mini dark rooms. <laughs> London loves the layout of the fort, all of the corridors, the various paths. It's a beautiful and wondrous place to roam freely. And I'm still marveling at these shells. I love shelling. We want to hear your favorite part as always. We want to know if you've been to Fort Clinton State Park previously. What did you do? What did you enjoy? Uh, do you have plans to check out the state park in or fort in the future? And if you like this video or found this video helpful, please hit the thumbs up button and let us know. Next video, we're heading south and we'll be back on the beach in Clearwater Beach, Florida. We'll be on Clearwater Beach, a beach named by TripAdvisor as the nation's number one beach in 2019 and made travel and leisure's list of the 14 best beaches in Florida in 2021. We're also walking Pier 60 where we encounter dolphins in the water and on the land. <laughs> it's a fun, beautiful destination, so subscribe please if you yet to do so. Join us off the couch again, please. Thanks for joining us this week, weathering the storms with us here at Fort Clinch in Fernandina Beach. Much appreciated. Thanks so much for getting off the couch with us for another adventure. Thank you for the shares, the likes, the comments, the feedback. It's all appreciated. These adventures only happen when you join us off the couch, so we sincerely thank you. Until next week, click on the video to see another one of our experiences. Thanks for watching.